Hello everyone and welcome to another parallel programming and supercomputing tutorial with the use of MPI. Uh, and for our uses we're using MPI for Pi, so we're going to use Python for this. In the last video I showed you guys how we can install this and in all the previous videos I showed you guys how you can build your own supercomputer out of Raspberry Pis. And now in this video we're just going to take it a step further, learn one more thing about MPI for Pi. Um, and yeah, so again, keep in mind that um, you need to have the whatever script that you're working on that you're going to run using MPI needs to be located in the same directory, you know, like the same path uh, on all the machines. Again, like I mentioned before, you can do some sorcery with this by having different contents of that. So the master node sometimes will have a specific file and all the worker nodes will have a, another specific file uh, just under the same name. Finally, um, I'm using SSH here, and I'm going to code the script in um, idle on my main computer. So I'm just going to code it straight into here. Now, just keep in mind that if you're doing the same thing, so if you're coding the script on your main computer, you do need to, you know, either use SCP to put it on uh, on your other, com um, you know, on your worker node, your master node, or you can just sudo nano. Uh, and type straight in to here. So, uh, just for example, here we're, I think we went into desktop and SCT, if I recall, CD SCT. And right now we've got SCT2.py. So, what you could do is sudo nano SCT2.py. Right? So, you could program all of this straight in. And it actually does do the highlighting. I didn't think it did. Pretty sure if you're like straight on your Pi, it doesn't necessarily do that. But anyway, so there it is anyway. So we could program it straight in, but I'm going to program it in idle anyways. So anyway, uh, so just as a aside there. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. This one's going to be pretty simple. Uh, but again, uh, the basic opening pretty much every time here is going to be from MPI for Pi import MPI. Uh, and then the next thing that we always pretty much want to do is com equals mpi dot com, oops, dot com underscore world okay now what we're gonna want to do first is I guess we can just we can continue uh, we can say print um, my rank is so we'll do that again com dot rank and now what I want to show you guys is just simple conditionals um, so we can use conditional programming here again. So what we can do is something like this. So we could say if com.rank equals 1. So 1 is going to be your worker node most likely. It's going to go by the ranks in that machine file. But let's say, like, well, for me, 0 is going to be the master node since that's the first listing there. And then 1 would be the worker node. But regardless, we'll just say print um, doing the task of rank 1. And then we can come down here and if com.rank equals zero, print uh, doing the task of rank zero. And finally, we can say if com.rank equals two, print uh, doing the task of rank two. Uh, let me just fix that for my OCD. We'll save that. And now again, I'm going to use SCP to put this file on. Uh, both pies. If you program it in, you can type it twice if you so chose. Um, but I'm just going to click and drag these. So once you've done that, uh, head over to your uh, master node. And I'm assuming I can just hit the up arrow and get to the last time we typed this. Show enough. So you should be able to do that. Otherwise, um, you know, use this command. Basically, you're First part is MPI run open MPI. Same thing for everybody. Number of processors. You can make whatever number you want. Machine file. Where's the machine file located? And then Python. And then run what? Um, and then where that file is located. Since we're in that directory, we can just say this. So uh, we don't want SCT2 though. We want to run SCT3. So let's go ahead and run that. See how we do. Sure enough, we get my rank is zero. Doing the task of rank zero. My rank is one. Doing the task of rank one. Let's run it one more time. <clears throat> and again, let's just do it. I was hoping to see them switch up, but I guess maybe they won't. Um, so now what, what we can do is we can come over here and we can say number of processors and instead this time say three, oops, say three, and we should see the rank two here. And sure enough, there we go. So 
uh, rank one, two, and zero. Okay, so real basic, uh, but I did just want to introduce the idea of using conditional um, conditionals here. So you can use if, and you can of course use else and elif and all of this stuff. Um, but what makes it interesting is that you're kind of using these conditionals between each other. So you kind of have to understand that it literally is going to run the script on each machine, but then it shares the information between them. So anyway, like I said before, there's going to be, as we as you get down further deeper into the rabbit hole, you'll find that you'll have to do a lot of trial and error to see like what you can get away with, kind of like when you first started programming. So anyways, uh, that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we're just going to take it a little bit one step further, learn a new command. Actually, let's see, we'll probably learn... Yeah, really just one more command there, and then we'll do just some simple math and just show the sharing of some simple math. Uh, so anyways, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying. If you have any questions or comments or you're confused on something, feel free to leave it below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.